So um, I'm going to talk today a little bit about the um, targeting the education sector, specifically in the U.S. So uh, back in, oh gosh, I guess it was April, um, myself, uh, Chuck Payne, was part of the community, and uh, Craig, Craig Gardner had gone to the National School Board Conference. And, uh, yeah, I guess I should get... <laughs> Let me make sure that this is running. Why is it not changing here? Okay. Yeah, well, I'll do it this way then. Um, so we went to the National School Board Conference, and um, the reason for that was we wanted to target top-level educators uh, or people that are involved in the decision-making process. And uh, at this uh, National School Board Conference, you get a lot of school districts throughout the, the nation that come there, and they engage in, well, similar to what we do at conferences, right? So... <clears throat> The people that were at this conference consisted of board members and then superintendents and staff members. <clears throat> oh, going back, yeah. So there's, that's the total number of uh, school districts in the U.S. And this is kind of how the structure tends to work at most um, school boards in the United States. So basically you have the school board, and the school board is where... They're the people with the money, and they are the approvers for, um, for the curriculum. They're, they're the approvers for the um, uh, purchases that might uh, a superintendent or a school might want to push through. So I guess I would say the buck stops there as an expression. Um, and the people that we kind of should be targeting is from a top down and a bottom up. And your technology, director of technology person, they're already familiar with Linux. Um, the hard part is getting them to convince the superintendent to bring it up to, um, to the school board. And of course, down here is where you have the various schools and the teachers. So if you engage with the teachers, they start talking to their principals they will have a meeting with their superintendent and their director of technology uh, to see if they can actually come to a solution in using Linux in the schools. So as I mentioned earlier, a couple key points here. Um, yeah, that, that, I guess the bottom portion is one, one thing I would kind of address. So they. You need to give them something. You need to give them uh, an idea of where they want to implement a um, five, three to five year plan. Most of these uh, school board members, they're elected. So they're kind of politicians um, and they play that political game. <clears throat> so if you give them something that they can take credit for, um, then, then you can push forward a plan of getting Linux into schools. Um, but it is important to give them somewhat of a challenge uh, so that they can take the credit for it, right? So the booth that we had at this conference, it was in, um, it was in uh, Boston, and it was fairly inexpensive. There were a lot of, um, there's a lot of synergies there. Next to us was um, Department of Defense uh, organization, well, sorry, an organization within the Department of Defense, and they give away free computers. So literally, anyone that was passing by our booth could fund their entire school with free computers and free software. Getting that message out <laughs> was a bit hard. I had a conversation. There was a guy, uh, and when, when I told him that our software was free and that they could use it, and a bunch of other things, 
He said, that's great, that's great, I really want it. And I said, I said, well, how much money do you have in your school system? He says, a lot, a lot. We just bought a bunch of computers. I said, oh, what kind did you buy? He said, well, we just bought like 15,000 Macs. So, so there's a problem here with, with uh, some of these people actually having the knowledge. And that's kind of why we want to, to talk to these, engage with these decision makers so that they can, one, make smart decisions, and two, probably use the tax, taxpayer's money better and also uh, yeah, get Linux into the schools, which is pretty common in other countries. Uh, the U.S. kind of has a difficult time with that, although they are starting to catch on. And you got to give them messages like this, right? You got to give them something that will get them thinking in a different way. So whatever metaphors you can put together or similes, um, this is, when we looked at how we marketed it, we had some good points, but we also learned some of the terminology that they're using. They're using things like one-to-one. -one. So what they're talking about with one-to-one -one is they want one student with one computer. And they want that computer to be able to have their parents use a computer with the same type of operating system, right? So they want to get everybody in unison. Um, they also have a big thing with, uh, it's called STEM, so you're looking at science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Of course, Linux has all of those, and it, it would be very useful to them. And we do it for free, right? So we express that there are people passionate about education uh, who are who are developing free software, and, and some of these programs are great. They're great to teach children about STEM, but also like how to write, how to spell, how to type. So, like I said earlier, try to hit on some key messages. Um, Okay, so what, you, what can you do? This is my last slide, pretty much. Um, it's, it's, like I said, a two-pronged approach, but it's also going to take a while. It's going to take some time for the U.S. market to start bringing in Linux. Uh, it started with uh, uh, Penn Manor, if you've ever heard of this. Um, it's a high school in the U.S., and they just started using Fedora. Um, and overall, Fedora marketed really well. Um, they, they, they put together a nice video, a long 10-minute video, explaining how they're engaging with the students. The students have taken over, and they're actually running some of their own, um, yeah, they're, they're, they're dealing with the hardware, they're dealing with the software, they're running the entire aspect, and the uh, professor, or rather the, the teacher, uh, is just having oversight. And it's creating a lot of opportunity for these students as they're going into college. And it's, it's accelerating their test scores. It's, it's really doing a lot for that particular school. And I think once, um, once you see these successes take place, that's when Linux will start to grab hold in the U.S. Um, so engage with teachers. This, this is... This is a message to you out here, but it's also a message to the people that will be seeing this video and who I'm talking to right now with the stream. Engage with teachers, talk to them, show them what Linux is about, explain to them the, ver the variety of different options they have to choose from, right? And uh, yeah, that's, this is sort of a, I guess a hard, thing is it would be nice if we could, as a community, as a, as a FOSS community, come up with a single campaign that really targets educators. And that's kind of what I wanted to bring up to you and talk with you about today. So any questions? So what's your plan? Uh, for OpenSUSE. What can, for example, OpenSUSE Education do to help you? Well, uh, yeah, I guess, I guess the front page or the, the, the landing page or the static page 
maybe create more of the, um, I mean, the way it is now, I think it's, I think it's like five pages, but what are the programs that are in there? Um, when you look at, okay, you can use, um, um, J. Capri, you know, for, for mathematics or something like that and highlight that within the open, uh, open SUSE education page as some of the programs about typing or things of that manner. So it's really, uh, from that perspective, yeah, I think that it would be good if, if it could be expanded and, and shown what could be used for different levels. You know, we're talking about K through 12, so, so really, um, yeah, <laughs> low, low, lower um, level to, to upper level. And in additional, maybe some aspects of college or something like that. So that the, the general work there is uh, probably done already. So we have, um, I guess you know OpenSUSE, so you know patterns. So if you install software, you can choose a pattern that is just for kids, or for kids up to 12, or from 12 and beyond. Um, maybe we should push that again, because that exists, just for your information, since OpenSUSE 10.2. Um, so we probably just missed some documentation and additional marketing here. Okay. Other questions? Um, hi. Uh, what were some of the concerns of the teachers? Like, what was the resistance? You told them, hey, there is this free software, it's great, it's free, you can upgrade. So what did they say against that? Well, it's, it was just skepticism, you know, that something that's free. Um, I, I, I think I came back from the conference saying, you wouldn't imagine how hard it is to sell something that's for free. Yeah. Um, but it, it, it's skepticism. When you show the fact that other people are using it and how they're using it, that then it becomes helpful. I mean, there were moments where I saw the light bulb go on. And, and that was, that was good. But the other ones, it was sort of like, there was one guy, was very rude. <laughs> Do you have a moment to talk about Linux? No. And he left. So, yeah. Um, in the Netherlands, uh, I could say that the huge part of education lives in a world of vendor lock-ins. Um, Small example, I had my foot in, in a school and because of the administrative system they used to follow, uh, which allowed parents to log in and have see teachers and pupils view their results, is a proprietary thing. Mm -hmm. um, they rely on it that much that they could not make a move. It's a small school, they could not make a move to Linux but had to move to Windows 7 at the time instead. Have you got any ideas how you could convince schools to break that, except the costs that they have to make in the future for not getting anything, and st uh, move? Well, it's the vendor, you know, the vendor lock-in, so you, I guess you can use terms of that nature. Um, they they look at these. I mean, most schools they're they're always strapped for cash, and you have cycles where you're going to get more, and then you're, there's going to be low points where they're not. Right. So they have life cycles, and it's really trying to move them in that direction. I think a lot of the less expensive things, like the Raspberry Pis and things like that, can help getting into. You're bringing those into the school system. That could probably help a lot more. Um, but no, I mean, other than that, I mean, y y if, you, if you have a conversation with the, with the director of technology, there a lot of the times, at least some of the ones I talked to there said, I would love to, I, I want to. It's a matter of convincing these directors and that can be hard sometimes, right? Because yeah. if, 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 uh, if if you're in a, oh, that was one thing I did fail to mention. In the U.S., your school district's budget is based on your, um, the income of that district. 
So you might have an extremely well-funded district and an extremely poor-funded district. So, any more questions? Okay, thank you. <laughs>